Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by True Digital Media Consulting. You're online right now and so are your customers, but marketing has to be a consistent journey. True Digital Media Consulting can help with your online ads, organic growth, and so much more. Contact us today at 832-934-4436 or visit our website at truedigitalmediaconsulting.com. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit KOGPassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. What up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome to another episode of The Docs here at the Sphere Podcast Network. It's your girl, Dr. Kwanzaa, and we are back for another amazing episode of The Docs Podcast, where we are your everything go-to source for health and wellness. We have a really cool show for you today. We're going to probably trip your head out with some medical mysteries that we just dug up from, from beyond, I don't know. Just trying to find some cool, interesting things uh, that you probably have never heard of or seen that's actually pretty intriguing, I think, to all of us in the in the medical field and hopefully to you, the viewers. Uh, but quick intro, I'm Dr. Kwanzaa. Uh, again, if you want to reach me, you can hit me up on Facebook at Dr. underscore Kwanzaa MD or Instagram at Dr. underscore Kwanzaa MD or my website, www dot Dr. Kwanzaa MD dot com. What up, Dr. Keisha? How are you doing? I'm good. How was your week? Uh, it was pretty good. Pretty good. Can't complain. Can't Got complain. the kids, the dogs, the, the rain, <laughs> all of that. Girl, you all that these dogs. I know. It's a, it's a process. A process. That's what's up. But I am so excited because every time you put an episode together, it's something with a twist. You think and so? Yeah. I, I try. Had, I had to go back to I medical try. school and kind of think about, okay, when I, what one is this again? And think about the genetics. You, you Girl, have my mind going. You know, I just don't like to be, uh, I just don't want to do boring stuff. So that's, you know, I just no. try to keep it interesting. So definitely. yeah, it's definitely not going to be boring. I'm probably going to, it's probably my grocery out a little bit, but that was the whole point. Make it no. kind of fun. Kind Very of fun. interesting. This is going to be a good episode, you guys. I'm Dr. Keisha. You can catch me on Instagram at KDMD underscore health. I talk about health and wellness, and I'm also a pathologist, so check me out around the way. I'm going to be starting something very interesting, so stay tuned. If you have any questions on lab work, diagnoses, I'm your girl. That's your girl. She yes. knows everything about it. She gets all in her super happy place whenever <laughs> we talk nerd about look. it. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, I had a crazy day. I like, got cussed out by about three different psych patients today, so I'm oh, like... No. I was tired, boss. I'm tired. But oh. it's okay. But it's all good. We got everybody taken care of safely. And, you know, they just weren't feeling well. Yeah. One of those days, my daughter has those type of days. I just oh, yeah. It was off breathe chain. through them. We do. Yeah, we do. We do. So that's probably why me and Dr. Keisha over here are looking uh, tired. But tired, we are right. Sorry. We're here for you always. But want to remind you guys, tomorrow, very important, it is voting day. Tuesday. Yes. Day, yes. I'm, I'm so excited. Like, I, I kind of waited on purpose to go. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did, because I just like the excitement. I don't know. I'm, like, really mm. pumped up about midterms, so I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm a avoid the crowd type of person, so I early voted. I normally avoid Love the crowd, it. but I don't know. I just want to. I just kind of want to get a feel for the people and see who comes out and see yeah. what's going to happen. And again, we just want to remind you guys to go get your vote, your voice heard. Uh, make sure you cast your ballot tomorrow. Tomorrow is the big day. Let's see how America's really feeling right now. Um, and again, uh, what's really important about this election here? Uh, we got about 435 seats in the House of Representatives that are uh, up for grabs. 35 Senate seats, 40 governorships. 
tips are up for consideration. And uh, I think overall, this is just going to be a real testament to how people are feeling about this uh, Trump administration, however you fall on that. Um, I, well, we're going to keep it neutral, but, uh, you know, however you fall on that per se, uh, I think this is your time to sort of voice your opinion. Uh, and definitely on this show, we want to make sure we encourage you all to go out and exercise and, and use your opportunity to make your voice count and heard. And really, this this uh, midterm is interesting because it is a lot about uh, women voters, especially yeah. after the Brett Kavanaugh hearing, um, who's just confirmed for... Um, uh, for what is that? The Supreme, Supreme Court justice, yeah. um, and then also about how people are feeling about immigration. Uh, given we have this uh, big caravan from Central America pushing their yeah. way to the border, um, so I think it's going to really shed a lot about say a lot about what people are feeling in the country, and then also let's not forget uh, the Affordable Care Act, Act, which is uh, which thankfully did not get repealed last year. Uh, for those who are interested in health care, but, you know, probably have a lot of things to do economically with that. So, Very again, important. go and get your voice heard. So Very important. I'll be there. I'll yeah. Be there. Good. Yeah, I'm excited Good. The about Affordable it. Care Act, very important because preventative health care is important. Yes. But unfortunately, like some of the things you're talking about today, some diseases are not so preventable, I true. guess. Very true. These medical mysteries. Very true. Right, so we're about to get into some medical conditions that have stumped the docs. So, you want to put that first? This is picture? almost like a Halloween type. It is kind of dark. Episode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's kind of dark. We got a picture twisted. up there. Very interesting. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, mm -hmm. again, you know what? Some of this is also about you know what being grateful, being grateful that you are not afflicted with some of the conditions that we know can happen to people. And this exactly. this is called Stone Man Syndrome. Uh, the long technical name would be fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. So try to say that Good five job. times. Thank you. So this is actually a genetic disorder. And if you sort of look at the, the bone structure, right, you see we have normal skeleton there. And then you have bone that's kind of dispersed all throughout, you know, everywhere. And uh, the basic mutation here is in a gene. And what typically tends to happen is that... Uh, this particular gene found in the bones, the muscle, and the tendons, it, it regulates the normal growth uh, from cartilage and normal development into bone in kids. And when this gene gets mutated, essentially what happens is it disrupts that normal cycle and it's always stimulated. So basically it doesn't have like the little stop feature on there to say, hey, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. Time to slow down. Time, time to chill out. Time to stop creating bone growth. And it just keeps going and going and going. And this is actually a devastating, very painful uh, disease and condition for people because if you can imagine your skeletal muscle, your soft tissue, that's like everything, like your skin, everything under there that's not bone, uh, essentially can develop bony overgrowth and then actually your joints can fuse together. Yeah. It's pretty... I don't know. I wouldn't want that. It's just severe. Yeah. Because I was reading that also, if you go to get your blood drawn, if you have a minor injury, basically when you have your blood drawn, right, your body reacts, it mm -hmm. heals, and it closes. Well, instead of that, this type of disorder causes the people to have bone and fibrous grow in those areas. Yeah. So imagine just getting your blood drawn, and then you have, like, fibrous tissue and bone. It is. And, the, and, and especially when you have trauma, um, it's devastating because it stimulates, you know, normal bone healing uh, in a normal person, right, would result in massive bone growth in people. And so you end up with these distorted figures and bodies, quite painful and overall probably just not a pleasant condition. But no. what I like to say to that, you know, big, you know, lots of love to anybody suffering with that. Um, you know, most of the time it's just palliative treatment to try to cut down some of the bone but it's also destructive at the same time because it can yeah. cause bone formation again but sure. that is the stone man syndrome i don't want it no i don't want it i don't want it uh what we have up next oh this one was really cool okay so have y'all ever heard of this thing called walking corpse syndrome have you heard of that no okay so i probably know the, the correct terminology but i don't really know the Oh, you know the correct term? Okay. No, so I don't walk in she's, she's smarter than me, y'all. <laughs> okay. So, like, 
this is like pretty interesting. I didn't, I thought this was like really hokey. And then I started reading on it. I was like, okay, I can kind of get it. it. So basically people with walking corpse syndrome, um, they basically have a disassociation from themselves in which they can perceive or believe that they're actually dead. They actually do not recognize, uh, parts of their own body they can also not recognize their own face it, it technically falls into uh the somatic uh disorders and uh if we go into the dsm-4 which is like the psychiatric textbook yeah. um but i mean really and truly it's a mental condition in which people believe they're missing body parts like their brain they actually believe that they're dead uh they walk around not eating, spending time in cemeteries, and they just have a desire to be around other people that are dead. It's really weird. Severe mental. Um, but, <clears throat> so, but the hallmark of it is the feeling of unreality, not being attached to reality, and being dead. They feel dead inside. And so they actually have studied this um, – few case studies it's not like super common but there's been a couple of case studies and so it's basically tied to the parietal lobe and the amygdala which allows you to associate and recognize your own face or yeah. features of yourself and also uh the amygdala also controls your emotional response to uh the recognition of that face so if you can imagine looking in a mirror and you can't feel an emotional response to seeing yourself or you could actually believe that um you know, you're not physically linked to yourself. Uh, it could be quite jarring. I mean, obviously, these people have don't have the best quality of life. You know, and people think they're, they're zombies. So it might be like you see a Walking Dead person coming along. You know, it yeah. could be Cortard's so delusion. Okay, we definitely have to keep talking about this a little <laughs> bit more. I think it's called Cotard. Delusion. Delusion yeah. as well. But this part of the episode is sponsored by True Digital, everybody. If you're online right now, your customers are too. So the question is, how do you actively reach them? Marketing has to be a consistent journey, and we're here to walk with you every step of the way. So please try True Digital Media Consulting. It can help you with website development, online ads, your business reputation, and even growth on search engines. Give us a call today to discuss a customized strategy for your business. That's 832-934-4436 or send us an email at truedigitalmediaconsulting.com. Mention the sphere and receive a free 30-minute strategy consultation. Boom. Another one. <laughs> oh, I love what he does. That, that was a nice <laughs> one, yeah. Um, one last thing about uh, Coach Art's delusion um, is that this one actually – you can get some treatment. So that's a really good thing. So um, they ha uh, psychiatrists have sa found some improvement with antidepressants, antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, and electroconvulsive shock therapy. Shock. Yeah. And I think this one also, they said that it can be with other disorders. So Correct. if someone has this, it's either, you know, something that just happened de novo, or do they have a brain tumor, or do they have right. an infection in that area of the brain? So you have to get checked out. I mean, it's kind of interesting, though. I think the point to all these conditions is it's just really interesting what the human body can do uh, when it's working beautifully and also when and not so it's beautifully. not working yeah. beautifully. But uh, it's interesting nonetheless. I mean, kind of. That's a very interesting one. Uh, what else we have? Up? Oh, yeah, vampire syndrome. So I don't think this is actually a really nice, fair term because I feel like people who have uh, xeroderma pigmentosum, like yeah. they're suffer, man. So and yeah, so, that's why I don't like some of the, yeah, uh, the common terminology. terms that they use yeah. for that. So uh, yeah, so this is a picture of somebody who ha is afflicted with uh, xeroderma pigmentosum called vampire syndrome. But I don't like that name, so mm -hmm. we're just gonna stick with the with the medical term. And this is actually a really uh, life-threatening and severe disease process that affects about one in one million people. And essentially, you have a severe sensitivity to UV light rays. So that means that if you go outside into the sunlight, you would be affected more than the general population, and even to an extreme degree, uh, by UV sunlight. And this is how it would appear, uh, massively severe burns. So like where you would, you know, you might walk outside and normally get like a little sunburn and in, in people who suffer from zero derma pigmentosum they get massively burned um they have an increased risk for skin cancer 
Um, and then also complete skin breakdown. And also you can see it's affected his eyes. His conjunctiva looks irritated and red. I mean, he just looks miserable. I mean, I think pretty devastating uh, disease. And so this one is actually yep. inheritable. Yep. I think the other ones were genetic, but not so much. Um, oh, I didn't did know it was inheritable. Yeah, so know. it's autosomal recessive. Okay. So if you remember back to school, you've got these two genes, right? In order to get this, the person who's giving, you have to get both of the bad genes. So right. either you're basically getting it from someone who's infected mm -hmm. automatically or someone, both of your parents were carriers for it. That's crazy. Yeah. But that's why genetic testing is important. It I'm gonna is. Get all that done. Okay. Um, it is. The only, you know, kind of good thing here is that, uh, well, no, there's not really any good treatment actually for this. Um, it's protective, right? Yeah, just but protective. But the problem is yeah. that even in the daytime, you're getting some amount, even in the car, you're getting exposure to UV. Yeah. I mean, most people don't go out the house. They yeah. probably don't. That's why they call them vampires because they wait until night to go out. That's how I felt yeah. on night shift, but, you know, I wasn't sick <laughs> from the sun, but. I understand what that's like. I mean, I, that's what I would do. I would just. That's what I do in Houston during the summer. <laughs> I wait until the night to go out. <laughs> but anyway, so much love to those with xeroderma and pigmentosum. It's only one in a million, but it could happen. It could happen. Um, well, there's a couple more, isn't there? But I think we need yeah. to do end Facebook Live. So you guys Aww. have to catch us. Please subscribe. We're going to grow. We're going to get input from you so that we can make sure our shows are better and continue to have good information for you. So subscribe to our show on all the platforms. We've got iTunes. We've got SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. Review our show on iTunes with constructive feedback so we know what you like or don't care too much about or who's your favorite co-host. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> share this live post and please share the entire show with your family and friends and donate to our mission. In order to keep it going and get this inspired content each week, you can donate at thespear.tv slash donate. Nice. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, peace out, y'all. Bye. Okay. All right. So the next one's pretty cool. Uh, well, let me stop saying cool. It's, it's, an interesting it's cool in scientific, the sense, yeah, yes. scientific sort yeah. of study of the human body. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to make light of anyone. So uh, this is a really interesting case. Um, it was probably only about five, I want to say five to six actual cases of uh, syndrome X disease. And probably the person who's most um, recognized or probably has brought you know, any sort of media attention to Syndrome X is a patient by the name of Brooke Greenberg. And Brooke Greenberg passed away at the age of 20. So the interesting thing about Brooke Greenberg is that she did not age. And so you can see in this picture, she looks about like six months old, six so to eight months old. almost the opposite of progerios where they right. look very old, mm -hmm. very right. fast. So uh, the interesting thing, so, you know, she basically had a lot of congenital problems that started at mm -hmm. birth. I mean, she had surgery. I think she had a gastric uh, ulcer that ruptured. They thought she had a brain tumor. So she had mm -hmm. a lot that happened in the early part of her life uh, that, you know, sort of stunted her development and sort of prolonged the recognition of how severe her her case or her her disease process was but just to put it in perspective between the ages of five and six years old she basically stopped growing completely like she didn't grow anymore um and at the age of eight years old she was basically the size of a six-month-old infant if you can imagine wow. like how tiny that is how small that is and uh, when she died at the age of 20, basically, she had the mental age and the natural development of about a one-year-old, uh, which is crazy. I'm sorry, a one-month-old. Uh, no, no, no. It was one years old. That's a typo. I'm sorry. Um, and so when she died, she died of uh, basically due to respiratory problems um, uh, called bronchi bronchiomalacia. Uh, and basically, that's when your cartilage and your lungs get weak and you're not strong enough to kind of breathe on your own anymore. Uh, but this is a very rare condition. There's only like five to six cases of this disease do documented worldwide. They still don't know why this happened. Um, you know, researchers have done some postmortem studies, mm -hmm. and there's there's some thought that, you know, this is due to a discordant, development cycle uh that doesn't in which some parts of the body develop but other parts do not 
and uh, unfortunately it led to you know a disastrous outcome for this for this little girl but I think the important thing to remember about Brooke Greenberg is that um, you know she her she was greatly loved by her family she did a lot of news media uh, her family did a lot of media to sort of um, bring light to the syndrome yeah. and do a lot of advocacy for the research and so there's only about five or six cases and they're still trying to put it Big together I mean obviously that's a pretty rare condition but yeah well imagine the genome is huge so right. She probably has a defect, and everyone else probably has something different. So trying to tie where exactly that abnormality is is, like, yeah, massive. Man. Massive. So, um, But that's, that's great book, Brooke Greenberg. So that was a pretty interesting case. And I think I was just more so shocked to see, like, her size. Like, it's interesting if you go through and you kind of research a little bit and you actually go through, like, her whole history and mm-hmm. just see her progression. It is weird to see a twenty, like someone who's twenty years old, look like yeah, a baby. Yeah, looking like a baby. I mean, it's pretty trippy. Does she speak well? No. She's about Adelaide. the developmental age of a one year old, oh, so okay. she can make sounds, kind of point, but you know, oh, nothing really beyond that. Nothing beyond that. Uh, where are we at? Uh, oh, tree man. Okay, this is just something I the put in tree here to man. just kind of gross y'all out. This is definitely a Halloween time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we show tree man? Oh, oh, tree man. You know what? This is one of those things that, you know, I saw this and I was like, this is hokey. I'm not going to talk about it. But then I kind of read up on it a little bit more and I was like, well, it's actually... It's- pretty interesting so tree man syndrome again i don't like the name but it gets its characteristic name from the way that the lesions look because it's basically something coming from the skin the soft tissue but it does look like bark kind of it does so basically it's almost like the same virus that causes hpv correct that's causing these skin lesions all over their body so it does kind of look like a tree right it's just not that nice, but it no. does. But that's where it gets the name from, that characteristic appearance. Um, and, again, there's not really a known cure for this condition. And like uh, Dr. Keisha said, it's basically, and this is, I didn't know this one was hereditary either. Autosomal uh, recessive, <laughs> yeah. so same thing, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, Which is a good thing because autosomal recessive means it's a harder chance to get it. But the dominant means one gene and you have that disorder. Well, thank so, goodness for recessive, because yeah. I'm sure that's very difficult to live with. But uh, like Dr. Keisha said, it is um, associated with HPV types 5 and 8. Um, also puts you at a higher risk for skin cancer. Typical age of onset is between 1 and 20 years old. Again, hereditary component. And uh, the cause is thought to be a mutation related to genes that regulate zinc which is interesting. Okay. Uh, and so basically um, the gene that's mutated prevents zinc from coming into the cells and restrict the viral growth. And as a result, you get this massive overgrowth of the of tissue. Uh, and really the only real treatment, you know, they can sort of cut off some of the lesions to make you a little bit more able to function, but they grow back. They grow right back. Yeah. It looks like it's they like, take some type like of a retinoid as well. Oh, yeah, a retinoid. I did read that. Yeah. But kind of cool, wow. kind of interesting, the things that actually people... Let's see that picture with. one more time. The tree man. That was pretty... I have never seen that one before. Yep. That, uh, Not that's, to that um, extent, should I that say. That patient is Dede Kasawa, and he's in Indonesia. But there's actually a lot of cases of that if you research that. But I mean, he kind of does it well, though. He kind of fly with it, though. Yeah, I mean, if exactly. you got to have the tree mm-hmm. man syndrome, I guess. I mean, I kind of like his energy in the picture. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so we only have, like, two more. And, in yeah. fact, I feel like it's the ad time. Did we miss an ad somewhere in here? I, think I feel it, like we yeah. did. So I always got to keep thinking about our sponsors here. So this portion of the show is sponsored by The Sphere. So are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. 
Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic ad is surely to hit the mark every single time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at thespear.tv. Doing it. Boom. Oh, wow. Booyah. I like these side effects. These sound know. effects today. Like giving me some energy here. <laughs> um, okay, so next one is kind of interesting because I always see this is the way my mind works. Yeah. I always think about like, what if this happened to me? So like, what if my child was born with this condition? So, so we what are, are going the to eight yeah. limbs. Yeah, yeah. So I know nothing about this. So I would either think there's a twin, uh-huh. or she just happened to have polydactyly or something of each limb. It looks like a twin. Yep. So you're right. So this is uh, Laxmi, La- and forgive me if I'm messing it up, Laxmi Tatma. And so basically mm-hmm. she herself was born with two arms and two legs on the top of her body. And then she had a parasitic twin. And when we say parasitic, that just means that they're tied through a blood supply, but the other twin did not survive uh, in utero. So she had a parasitic twin twin fused her body at the level of the pelvis, which kind of makes sense. You can kind of see that there. Uh, With two arms, two legs, a torso, but no head. So um, the parasitic twins stopped growing in the uterus. um, And that's actually the only reason why that she was not born as a conjoined twin. But uh, interestingly, this is actually a a really beautiful success, success story. In 2007, about 30 surgeons spent 27 hours uh, operating on her, removing those extra limbs and uh, rebuilding her body. But what about her pelvis down? She Did she have intestine of her own? She had Let's, some. Oh, wow. Yeah, she had some intestine of her own. Um, I think she had to have you know, more surgeries after that, but they were able to basically fix it a little right. fix it at least you know get the bottom part kind of together wow. um but i mean she looks good actually there yeah. was another picture I, maybe i forgot to post it in there but it's all good but it shows her after like but she looks pretty, pretty she lovely. looks good i mean she used to have eight good. limbs but uh last but not least this story just tripped me out so that's why i threw it in here and this is the story of the trap twin oh so, so similar gotta, but not too similar similar but it's a little crazy, in my opinion. But let's just see. Can we throw the picture up there? All right. This is Mr. Sanju so Bagat. So he became an adult. Right. So Mr. Sanju had a very large stomach for many, many years. And never like, decided to go. This is why health care is so important. That his tummy. That is just, is, you know. About his tummy was getting bigger, and uh, his friends teased him. His family teased him. They thought he looked pregnant. They were like, "Hey, like you got to get on you, boy. Like I need to do some crunches." But uh, Mr. Sanju <laughs> never got that checked out until the age of thirty-six years old. Uh, at which point his uh, abdominal girth got so big that oh. he couldn't breathe anymore. He almost looks like a cirrhotic patient or uh, yeah. you know somebody with liver disease who uh, has a lot of. Uh, uh, fluid, fluid in the in the abdomen but uh yeah so he's got this big old belly and so after some time i guess it got unbearable after 36 whole long years and uh he couldn't breathe and so that's what took him to the hospital now the other thing i thought was interesting about this story they thought he just had a tumor mm-hmm. i guess maybe they didn't have cat scans i'm not yeah, sure where he is located missed. but i was like maybe they didn't have a scanner but you know if you do scan scan this because if it wasn't figured out when in utero they probably did just see some mass that's not functioning so you just see a mass that looks like a. I mean but that looks like a foot it almost like, looks like a teratoma up. or something it, it, it does I just feel like <laughs> I don't know but long story short so they just thought it was a tumor and they're like ah we'll go in there we'll get it out no big deal. So the surgeons went in to operate, and lo and behold, they found a whole nother fetus inside of his abdomen that had been growing along with him for 36 years. So how in the world can this happen, right? So yeah. this actually happened inside of the uterus, well, in utero. Mm-hmm. So basically, he had a twin. The twin actually grew into his, his abdomen. abdomen. Uh, and Through the umbilical cord? Yeah. Something oh, like that. Like um, 
Yeah, that's the only entry. Uh, yeah, got to be the entry point, right? Yeah. So in some cases, what happens is the blood supply will get get kind of tied together, essentially. And so, you know, like most human tissue, as long as you're feeding it blood oxygen, it'll grow. Wow. And essentially for 36 years, uh, this non-viable fetus was growing inside of his his stomach. Is there an after for this? Do you have an after no, picture? I don't have an after. Wow. But... It's a lot better. He's but the surgery he's, he's feeling much better. Successful. Yeah, Absolutely. feeling much better. But uh, this you is a really <laughs> this is a, a really rare condition. It's called fetus MP2, and it occurs when one twin gets trapped inside the body of another twin in, while it's still inside the womb. Uh, usually, uh, this is fatal. Uh, but wow. uh, sometimes, if you have the right vasculature, he just might have been connected up pretty good and so it, it didn't starve him did of uh, enough nutrients to kill him uh, and Mr. Sanji made it and he's wow. breathing a lot better and his belly's a lot better but that's um, pretty amazing that's, well, that's what I like at this is the beauty of science though these it little is. things these little things that don't, don't happen too often but you have to admit they're amazing they are and, and i was all in my little happy place like yeah. looking this stuff up like oh this is so I cool know. like how did cool. this happen um but last but not least, we got to give a big shout out to one of our favorite sponsors, which is KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empowerment movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside of their fears and have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Excuse me. Shop dope gear at kogpassion.com. That's kogpassion.com. And use coupon code D O P E exclamation mark for 10% off exclusive Unleash Your Dopeness apparel. Act now. Sizes are selling out fast. And you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh. And just like that, <laughs> we're done for the day. We're we keeping it short and sweet today. We just wanted to bring you some uh, interesting little tidbits to kind of. Get our uh, juices going over in, in the medical world when we get in our little nerd vibe. But uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little something. Hope we, hope we brought you something intriguing. And if you see any of these people, don't call them the tree man or, or vampire people yeah. or the. Now you know the correct term. Yeah. Yeah. You can say, uh, hi, sir, with epidermal dysplasia varicosiformis. <laughs> they going to get it down? Y'all got it. Y'all smart. Y'all got that. But uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a surprise. A surprise. Another a surprise, surprise we'll for next out. week. So we'll catch you we'll catch you next time. Right. Again, I'm Dr. Kwanzaa MD. Hit me up Facebook, Instagram, Dr. underscore Kwanzaa MD on IG, Dr. Kwanzaa MD on Facebook, or hit me on my website, www.drkwanzaamd.com. Oh, and my meditation mixtape. Mix it. Yeah, what if we want some music or we need a DJ for a party? It's coming through. Oh, yeah. You can book me online on my site. Um, But, yeah, so my meditation mixtape project is almost done. I've been in production. I've been over here making beats and stuff, so I'll have it for you real soon. I need that. I'll have to send you out a free gift. So much love and appreciate you for watching. Yes, take care. And Dr. Keisha, please check me out on KDMD underscore health. You're going to start finding a little bit more about pathology and little questions you can have. Anything you have, just check me on that. And also, don't forget the Dance and Health segment. So on Facebook, Dance Health and Fitness LLC, I have little tips for eating right, staying healthy, and staying fit. All right, till next time. Bye.